So technically they wouldn't be allowed if we didn't have a campground ordinance. And they're there year round. Also, every campground in White County and every campground in Carroll County has what they call seasonal campers. And they, they even though you're closed in the winter, they leave the trailers there year round. And that's what we're asking to do that's consistent with what's been being done in there year round and what all the um, other campgrounds typically, typically do. We're still closing in the winter. I want to impress upon the board that we're not running this as an overnight campground where people are pulling in by the weekend and leaving out on the weekdays. Every person that signs in there signs for a season from October to October. They have to call up Nipsco and get their electric hooked up directly through Nipsco. So they have to go through that. So you couldn't come on the weekend when you're getting electric. You know, hook it up on there. So basically, we're operating this in the same manner it's been operated since the 70s, where the units are there. And uh, but we're just trying to bring it into what's made aware that 480 square feet is supposed to be with a special exception. And the variance for the in that then is 120 days. I know at uh, White Oak, you know, they have more campers than we do that stay there year round. Walnut Ridge is in there in the district. Same difference. You know, they have 54 seasons, campers that stay there exactly the same way we're doing it. Except those campgrounds also have overnight people that can come back and forth. So um, I don't think it would be. Um, you know, dangerous to the public health, to the safety of the general welfare, because it's a consistent type of use as far as longevity goes. And the adjacent properties wouldn't be affected in a, in a substantially adverse manner because there's bed units there year round, you know, for several, several years. And if we stick to the strict applications of the zoning, then minimum we have to make not only the people that we've, you know, in good intention brought campers and they're ready to stay, people that have been there, well, there's six of them now or seven, would have to leave because they would be considered underneath the thing as a, as a camper under the 480 square feet. So that's what we asked for that there, for, just to fit like a normal campground. I think it's good for the community that we do the, that as a seasonal, that it's not overnight, it's less traffic, it's colds in the winter, it's not people coming year round, that kind of thing. Um, you, we know who's coming, who's going, who's what. Also the difference between a camper and a mobile home, which I learned the hard way, is it takes about six months to a year and a half to get a mobile home removed through the court systems and between four and seven thousand dollars to remove them because that's considered like a tenancy rights type of thing. And um, so, and I can't make the same kind of rules. Right now I can make a rule for a reservation as a campground that says if you drive your golf carts off property or whatever, you lose your reservation. I can't go in front of the court and say somebody do drove their golf cart on somebody else's private property, we want to evict them. The judge is going to say that has nothing to do with you, the person has to do. So we have more control of what's going on. And I don't think that's going to happen anyways, because it's kind of like a mirror. I've talked with some of the neighbors, and they have some concerns about traffic, you know, golf cart traffic and people coming down there. And it's ironic that the clients that we've brought in have the same concerns they don't want people driving through, and everybody wants to protect themselves or their properties and that. And I think we got both a bunch of good people on both sides of it, and I don't think that's going to be an issue. And if anybody knows me in the campground business, you really kind of want to follow the rules of my campgrounds. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not that mean, I guess, for lack of better terms. But that's why I'm asking for the variance because if we, if we're a campground. I want the units to stay there year round. I don't want them overnight. I want to be consistent with the other campgrounds. I want to be consistent to the use that's been being used on there. And, and you know, that's pretty much the reason. What is your connection with ABCD? I'm the sole member, the owner of ABCD. Okay. On there. So, yeah, 
I was just looking at the D that was on here, and that was a Jackie Jacob. Jack I bought Jacobs. it from the Jacobs, and I think they, I, I don't know, these guys back here know more who owned prior to that. I know there's but a YC, I've got YCs in here. ABCD is your corporation. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're closing the uh, what time frame are you closing? Okay, um, our, our like reservation for the seasonals are, is from October 23rd to October 25th of next year. Let's see the 25th to the 23rd, whatever, on there. And we're close till April like 23rd, 21st, 23rd, whatever that Friday is there every year, that third Friday in April, we open and we close. And um, there's only two trailers that stay open year round there. I keep, you know, I have the one person that works for me. We supply him a trailer that watches the place, makes sure things are working, no blow up. And then we have uh, Christ, uh, his last name is Christ, and uh, uh, we have made him, since we bought him, he's, he's kind of a nosy kind of guy, nice guy, but he's kind of our eyes, you know, if we're not there. And so we call him the campground host, basically. But other than that, the water's turned off to every campsite. Nobody can come and camp on the thing, you know, and, and that's the way it's been operated for um, as far as talking with the state with Mike and the, and the new inspector and that, this, as far as, I've got paperwork from 97 when they're running water lines, and he said he could find it for further than that if he wanted me to go in the basement, if it wouldn't be on digital. So it's been operated as a carry for, um, well, at least since 1997. See, I, I tried to find that if the uh, ordinances came out after for like a conforming, non conforming use. And I spent several hours in the recorder's office and we're trying to figure that out. But I, uh, the state hasn't got back to me when the first exception, so it's got to be a long time ago because it's not on the computer. We have to look it up paperwork wise, going through files or whatever, or the original. When the state considered it a kit, according to this, to Mike at the state, he doesn't, he doesn't, well, he doesn't think it was ever a mobile home park, and I don't think it ever could have been a mobile home park. I would have bought it if it was a mobile home park, on the plate, because the restrictions and the requirements for a mobile home park, quote unquote, um, this they would never, you, you couldn't eat it. Back in, the, back in the 70s, I know if you paid 300 bucks a year, you weren't here about a year or a year around. They would give it a, I was an associate with somebody associated with back in 74, 75. Right. Well, I was, sure. When I, I talked with Bogey, it's only it's $300 a year, and they're not allowed to do it at high most at that time. Okay. Yeah, because I talked with Bogey, Bogey there. He said that his parents and dad were bought in 1974. Yeah. On there. And there was like 60 some trailers there. I don't know specifically how they operated it, but I, I tr trust with all the cameras we had to do to find the broken sewer lines, bad water lines, or whatever. I just don't see this thing ever being open year round. The public might know if it was or not. I, I, you know, I haven't been here that long to know, and I'm just finding things out now, you know, as far as the history going back to it. I do know that the, uh, the private road that runs through there and runs by the lots, that was in like 1948 that was put in there. First, uh, uh, you know, certificate of survey and that for that was in the 40s. And I got more information on that when we get to the exception part of it. On there. But um, the state considers, if you, the state code is, if you have five or more mobile homes that are permanent, that's the word use, permanent residence, then you have to come in and get a mobile home park license or whatever. The state does not have a per se, you hang a license for a camera. 
but they have campground inspections, which I have, I can provide it, things like that. And, and your water test is monthly when you're open instead of quarterly as a mobile home park. And it's always been tested monthly. But they consider the mobile home then that's not lived in as a vacation mobile home and it's under the jurisdiction of the campground inspection of the campground estate. So if so basically two mobile homes there would be considered I guess you could consider primary residences, even though my paperwork says you could not use it as your primary residence, but you know, in my mind here, they, there's, they live there year round, not two of them, but the rest of them are considered vacation mobile homes under the campground ordinances. So you're saying that you have, when you designate, when we're saying mobile home, you're talking like a 14 by 50 foot mobile home, or are you talking a recreational vehicle? Actual mobile. Okay. So the state doesn't the state doesn't define by square footage. The county decides, defines, you know, there's other de definitions, but primarily 480 square feet and under is a camper, 480 square feet and over. Um, and there's other things can move down the road, but um, if you you know if you look at that I think closely it, it suggests that it's a square footage. The the state looks at it from use. So you could technically, I don't want to get into it too deep here, it's complicated, but technically you could live in a motorhome with the state if it was your primary residence. Technically. I didn't I didn't understand when you were talking about 480 square feet. I thought that was a lot of size. No, that's the unit size. The actual size actual size. Of, actual size Page of 45. Right. And, and these are the pictures right the board, it's under definitions. of all the campers. I got this from the county. That's was it, I said go back as far as you can and see, because I know what there is today, and, and get me the sizes. And so that's where I came up with those facts of how many were under county ordinance um, definition were considered. So the state has their language, and then just like the rest of everything, the county can, of course, incorporate their language as well, which is what we did in 1971 with our definitions, and all that, which is page 45 in your definition to the permit. Camping trailer, recreation vehicle park, my home site. When he switches back and forth from mobile homes, RV to camper to trailer, that's... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I should get better at that. I just... You know, it's the jargon when you're in the business, you know. Um, but basically what we have there in the language of the county is we have mobile homes and we have recreational vehicles in the language of your guys' definition. Right. Okay. In your definition. In the state definition. And, and the county says if you have two or more. So... Technically, I would be with two people that park. If I have two or more that are over the 480 square feet, the county definitions consider that a mobile home. Correct. So are the two that are there that you say are living <coughs> full time, are they over the 480 square feet? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cindy, I, I've got a question, a legal question for you. If, uh, if this was in prior to the establishment of the zoning ordinance, would part of this fall under the legally non-conforming portion of our rules? Yes, Right. So. <laughs> um, and do we have the right to change that 
from 30 days to 360 days in the filing by the county ordinance changes on the county. Yeah, we, do, we have the ability to modify that or, that ordinance for this one situation. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to amend the amend the uh, ordinances itself. We just give a variance of, of, of over for that. So we can also place restrictions on a variance that we grant also, correct? say if he closes in October, sometime in October, we could uh, restrict it from habitation, say, months of November, December, January, February. Yeah. With the state uh, state license, who trumps it? We have to close the state has the trouble first. Uh, or anything else well, that's going on? We first had to register it with the state and get all the state inspections and everything, which he has done. I went online and found all that. So uh, he, he's done everything he needs to on that. I, I don't think they have any control beyond that. As long as he meets their inspection requirements, um, that then it's to us from there. Yeah. Any other questions from board? Doug? Jeff, Teresa? Inspections are from the state board of health. Right. So they're yeah, I don't go home for 30 years. I know what those are all about. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. what we have. They have the trump on that, and we have the trump on it. Okay. Okay. If it pleases the board, I I don't have an issue with uh, the campground. It's closed, you know, November, December. The water's turned off, so I don't have an issue with, you know, I guess it depends on how it's worded. You know, I don't want to be in trouble if someone comes and looks at the camper. No one's going to come and stay in the camp or go the window with the no water or nothing. Right. No. And, and from your standpoint, close November, December, January, February would not be an issue. Not no. Okay. With the exception of the two. Right. With the exception of the two. The two, yeah, two, two employees. Right. Of the two employees. Park. Because right. I don't want a mobile home park. Yeah. Okay. And if I need to keep it as a mobile home park to satisfy, I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't think they do. No. Okay. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, no, no, no. Okay, thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Good. Cameron, uh, properly advertised, you know, and signed post to the acceptance. And staff report? Um, October 29, 2021, ABCD Mobile Home Park LLC filed a petition, uh, or actually a petition, petition for a variance to Article 4, Section 14. Uh, to change the uh, days allowed from 120 to 365 to accommodate seasonal camping. A uh, sign was posted in the Carroll County Common on November 10th. Letters were sent to adjoining property owner owners. Um, the area plan office did receive several emails, calls, um, and uh, citizens that did stop in the office uh, to voice their concerns. Um, yeah, the sign was posted. He did send all the documentation for the, the sign and for the posting in the Carroll County Council. Okay, being paid, correct. Everything is paid. All the right. fees have been paid. Everything for the area plan side has been met. Okay. I do have a question now. Um, it says to accommodate seasonal camping. Is that seasonal parking? I mean, I guess I, I, it doesn't seem clear to me. That's his language on the application, so it's not something I can. That's his. That's it's his. A seasonal camping. You've got that with right. birds. So that's seasonal camping. Um, is what I what I was trying to define is that we're only open during the summer season. So that's called 
Otherwise, in, in the business, it would be called year-round candy. Okay. So we're open for the summer season and we're closed for the winter season. But they leave their trailers there while it's closed. So seasonal candy for parking is what it is. The, the, the year-round year parking. Parking, seasonal use. Seasonal use. Okay. Right. There you go. Okay. All right. <coughs> Okay, I guess we'll open for public comments, and is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of granting this variance for the uh, variance of the 120-day uh, limitation on uh, recreational vehicle being parked on the site? If I may, to the board, I asked none of the clients to come tonight because I figured it would be busy, and uh, but, um, that's why... I, there's probably nobody here. That um, is, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> <That'd be better. laughs> is there anyone who wishes, any, anyone who wants to wish to speak in favor of this? Anyone wish to speak in opposition to granting a variance for parking on the spaces for more than 120 days? Sir, please come up here. Can I just add uh, one thing that I What's your name? What's your name? Sir, you My mean? name is Richard Eckhart, and I have a place up there, a cottage up there. And uh, one of my questions is, how come, I guess it's always been a mobile home park. Where did this RV come into it? That's, I mean, it was never rezoned or anything between a mobile home park to an RV park. I don't you don't have that. to read it. The zoning classification does it. It's L1 has language for uses. You wouldn't have to rezone it as a. You wouldn't rezone. You'd rezone it to whatever the classification of zoning: agricultural, suburban, residential, L1, all that. The L1 zoning is separate than. So is that what you're asking? Yes. The specific use of so it, it being a campground or all of us are under L1 then. Yes, that's the entire, not the full out of yeah. Yeah, L1 Lake Resorts uh, <clears throat> is, uh, permitted uses are single family dwelling year round, compact homes, and mobile homes permitted in L1, planned developments, agriculture with the exception of confined feeding operations, public parks, playgrounds, recreation areas, public golf courses, country clubs, Churches, cemeteries, public elementary, junior high schools, government and public utility use, temporary buildings and structures, incidental construction work only for a period of such work, storage of continually unoccupied recreational vehicles in private garage or rear side yard, uses in buildings customarily accessory and clearly incidental in the above permitted use. Uh, those are that's actual permitted uses without anything going to the uh, area plan or the board zone appeals. Uh, permitted uses via special exception are home occupations, clubs, lodges, nonprofit, recreational vehicle park, in accordance with Article 4, Section 14, public and private recreational camps, such as Boy Scouts, school related, and religious groups. Business catering or marine activities such as commercial boat docks, boat service areas, marine equipment stores, boat storage yards, bait and tackle shops, uses buildings and structures customarily accessory and clearly incidental to the above, uh, above uses. So the, uh, the reason he's asking for a, a variance is because in the Article 4, Section 14, it limits the maximum time that a recreational vehicle can be parked to 120 days. So you would, you would need a variance to park them year round on the property. Does that explain? Yeah. Okay. I just never knew how it went. Yeah, it's, it's hard to hardly it's, park. So. It's, kind of, it's kind of complicated, so. Yeah. Okay. Anyone wish to, anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Please come up and state your name, address. <coughs> and please make your comments 
pertinent to according to the 120 days. My name is Joe Norris. I own property at 12388 West Crest Drive. I own property at 12390 West Crest Drive. I've been coming to this lake location since 1963. I remember when this trailer park was in 1974. I remember Harry Hill owning this trailer park. He was a son of he was the son of the original, one of the original owners, I believe, but I don't know that to be factual. I think the the size of the trailers, I've never seen a camper there. I've seen trailers of the era that were smaller. And as things have evolved with camping and whatnot, uh, they've grown. I have a couple of concerns with my home value and the number what the to the I own one of I own two homes at the bottom of the hill five homes um, at the very end of this lower level there was one trailer prior to five six years ago I'm not sure exactly when uh, but it, it had deteriorated and was destroyed there was one trailer on that lot now there's two campers and potentially a third in that same space. Um, so I'm concerned about the numbers. We haven't heard anything about the numbers of sites that will be uh, his goal, if you will, and how that will impact us. Sure enough, we have a, an access road that comes down that's a steep drive, and there's children on bicycles and golf carts and uh, there's five homes at the bottom of this hill. Behind the, on the other side of the drive, the hill's an easement, the drive is an easement. There are tra there's a couple trailers. These folks have been there for 20 some years or longer. Some have been, some have moved on for personal reasons or what have you, none of my business. But now there's multiple home or campers, if you will, popping up in the area that used to be so my concern is the size, the footprint of a camper or an RV versus a mobile home. There's considerable difference. Most of these campers have come in with de decks that are larger than the camper themselves. Uh, which maybe there's no regulation on that. I don't know. One of the things that <clears throat> prior to 2020, there were uh, there were more than two people living there year round that have since moved on, and their trailers have been uh, eliminated, disposed of, what have you. Um, some of the things that uh, concern me is, and maybe this isn't the proper format, but. When I had to hook up to my sewer, I had to destroy a perfectly good septic system and pay $2,500 to hook in for each house to hook into a sewer. I had to put a check valve in, I had to put a riser to the check valve, and I wonder what fees the sewer district is charging for these RVs to hook up to the sewer. I pay $72 a month per house for a sewer, whether I'm there year-round or not. My home has primarily been a seasonal home. So, you know, we're, we're talking about 120 days. You know, so I know that, that, that ties into it because it's a seasonal issue, a seasonal loss, if you will. Do they pay sewer bill year-round? I, I can't answer that. Uh, I do know. Yeah, I prefaced it with I don't know if this is the proper yeah, setting. I, I I don't know what the the Twin Lakes Sewer District does. There is a requirement, you know, uh, they have special rates for recreational vehicle parks. They also have uh, special requirements that uh, you know designate a recreational vehicle. That's Twin Lakes Sewer District, and. Uh, 
this is outside of Arthur Bay, but the sewer district says that uh, it is not a recreational vehicle if it has permanent improvements attached to or over the facility or structure. The facility or structure that is normally transported by a professional transportation company. So, in other words, if you can't hook it onto your pickup truck and move it, it's not an RV. Uh, the facility or structure placed on and attached or secured to a foundation constructed with materials such as poured concrete, concrete blocks, mortared block, brick, treated wood. So if it's anchored to anything, it's not an RV. The, uh, the facility or structure uh, is not capable of 12 or 24 volt electrical service. So if, it, if that vehicle doesn't have 12, 24 volt electric service, it's not an RV. So, and it goes on and on. This is all Twin Lakes Sewer District requirements. So if it's not a, if it's not an RV, it's not, a, not permitted to have their special RV campground rate and would be charged the full rate for a house. Okay, so then, which is what we don't have any control. We don't have any control to that. that. Okay. Yeah, that's something. I preface that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to make that clear. I appreciate it. Answer your question. Okay, so there's also regulations under uh, your article 14 as it applies to mobile homes and RVs with a green belt. Yep. Uh, that, I don't know where he plans on going moving forward, but I would like to know the number of sites he anticipates having there. And I really don't want to look at all this. Well, well sir, you know, to be honest with you, there are certain rules here for the recreational vehicle parks that he has to comply with. And it uh, states in the rules there shall, shall not be more than 17 per acre, which comes up to about, I think, 2,500 square feet per each RV. Yeah. And this is one of the things. So he's only looking at a variance for the 120 days. All the other rules would still apply. So if he didn't have, if his average square footage per, per for his lots was less than the approximately 2,500 square feet, say he had an 1,800 square foot lot, he would be in violation of the rules and, and uh, uh, complaint would result in action from the Area Planning Commission for the violation of the zoning ordinance. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to say is... And, and, and the green belt, you are correct. There is rules in here for green belt around it. But that's subject to your discretion. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not looking at that. That is, that is written in the rules. So that's not our... He, he hasn't asked for a variance of that. So if he has a recreational vehicle park, he would have to comply with that. Okay. It, do, it does say that it's where he is necessary by the board is not Okay. Thank so you. So we do have say. Oh, we do oh have I'm say sorry. On that. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So the other thing I have concern with is emergency vehicles. When he shuts down for the winter, he puts a cable across the lot. The road goes off the 1250 west which is the access road for the trailers on the lower level. But also, hit the hinders emergency vehicle access. There was, my neighbor had uh, a need for EMS in the summer, late summer, fire department couldn't come down the hill, and ambulance came down the hill. So if I'm, I'm in the process of building a house to live there year round, and I'm concerned about EMS access and how that implies with uh, this variance maybe has nothing to do with it. But when he closes that road off, it blocks EMS access back to my house. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any, any questions for the board? Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Please come up and state your name. Lynette Griffin, we on the house at 12336 West Coast Drive. When you read those uh, definitions, the part about the RV park was in under the exceptions, right? The yes. second part? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, <coughs> for definitions? 
Yeah. And page 45 and yes. Permitted use recreational vehicle parks uh, by special exception by the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, according to Article 4, Section 14. So has that been taken care of? That's the second thing. That's the second, 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 second item. Second item. This is for a variance. This isn't the special exception part. This is a variance. Okay. So it's a this is the way. This is the way that Cameron put this. I guess my other question while I'm up here, you know, when you were talking about what the rules are for a, a recreational vehicle park, the Greenway. Yeah. I mean, how do we? How do we know that that's going to be? It's not taken care of now. Cindy, which one's? Page. It's I. It's I. Page 25. I mean, do we have to come back for that? Page 25. Yeah, it's 14. Okay, all right. Uh, the, let me read this, what it says. A dense green belt of evergreen trees and or shrubs not less than three feet high after one full growing <coughs> season and of which maturity will be, is not less than 10 feet shall be located and effectively maintained at all times along the park boundary, lines where deemed necessary by the Board, board of Zoning Appeals to protect occupants from adverse influence outside the park or nearby neighbors from adverse effects of the park. So the Board of Zoning Appeals has the authority to require a dense green belt of evergreen trees and or shrubs not less than three feet high mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. property lines. You know, if, if, would, we, would we have to come back for that or what? Uh, that would be under a special exception for a recreational vehicle park. We can they can enforce that. that. Yeah. You guys can implement yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that would be under the next item that we're going to have to address. Okay. okay. Yep. It's, I'm sorry it's so complicated. It's, it's okay. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that that one part was, it didn't sound like when you read it that it's covered yet. Yeah, it will, it's on the net. Okay. Okay, anyone else wish to speak, either for or against? Can I just ask a quick question? Yeah, please stand up and state your name. Uh, my name is Clarence Lucas. I own the property at 12330 West Crest Drive. I just want to be clear that this variance only applies if the exception is approved that we haven't talked about yet, right? The, the variance would be for, you know, time limitation on parking them. Right, but know, he doesn't have an exemption to, to have recreation vehicles yet. That's on the agenda for the season. That would be the next item. Yeah. yeah, so this variance only applies if that is approved, correct? Well, it's kind of have, it's hard to have uh, yeah. recreation yeah, vehicles. It's, it's, right, right. 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 we're kind of talking about these out of order, I think, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, okay. Okay. I just want to clarify. We, we can address it with the motion. Yeah. We can address it with the motion. Yeah. We can address it with the motion. Anyone else we wish to speak? Any other comments? Yes, yeah, sir. Please. Uh, my name is Brooke Snyder. Um, my wife and I own 12384 West Crest Drive. Um, I, I echo some of the. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess I echo some of the, the safety concerns about um, the egress. Um, we were forced, not we forced, we chose to live up there over a winter uh, due to some remodeling that took too long. And uh, the egress, you cannot get in and out of the property from the east to go down the hill. It's uh, impossible to see from there. But it's a concrete slab at 20% grade at least. And it's. Um, it's really difficult to, to get in and out and any, um, I guess, infringement upon being able to come in from the west would really be a, a hindrance to anybody who lived there year round or um, and I think one of the things was endangerment to public health. Um, on the 4th of July, you can't get in and out of that area. The more people that are there, I know it's, it's minimal now and I know he may have the right to have more uh, lots or more people down there but uh, it will definitely negatively impact the ability of the EMS to be able to service anybody over the 4th of July or any of the major holidays. Um, being able to access that, get in and out, it's a single lane. There's no way to get in and out other than that road um, along the snow ditch, along that uh, north bank of there. So it's, um, yeah, it's that right where the picture's at right now. 
that, 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 that line right there by the docks. That's a single lane. There's um, no that way. That, that, uh, road that comes yeah, that's that road that comes right there. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. And that services our houses are over there. Um, yeah, that's our house. That's sort of see inside there. But this area right in here, up top, there's roofs right there along the north side of that gravel. And you know, we all purchased uh, rights of egress uh, through there. Um, Mr. Wagner has repeatedly refused to move his vehicle for me when I'm there on the weekends, um, even though I've purchased it right now. That doesn't really apply to this, but I'm just trying to build into the fact that there's no way in and out. And the more people that are down there, the harder it is. And I think for public safety, that's, um, that's a really serious liability for you all to take on to allow more people to be down there. So, Cameron, I got a question. The, the parking park that he's wanting to look at, where is this it then to be located on that? That's a really good question. This is the, so this is the, the property here. This is the, this is the county road that comes into it. It's this area right here. Okay. And that's, that's <laughs> not the, that's not the lower level. This is Lower Hampton Drive. So the road comes in uh, at the barn here. Let me zoom in. This is the Google. Google. So the, okay. you're talking about this road right here, correct? <coughs> no, it's, no, it's, it's a road by the docks. That's the steep way. Yeah, you go this way. Yeah. There we go. So it's this road right here that comes right here. And it connects. There's only well, currently right now there's connection. one way in, one way out with ingress, egress. Is that correct? But yeah. But there's the campers and stuff, will they will they be in that lower area or they're gonna be up on top? They'll be in that lower area. So and just to a uh, point in fact, the one that's next to Wagner's house, which is the farthest west house. Uh, that structure burnt down and the fire department couldn't get there in time to save it. So there is a precedence that's been set for a structure burning and then not being able to get in there in time. Get that that was prior. That site plan that like that yeah. should have the ones highlighted that you check there. That's the up top. This is down down below. It doesn't really show it right here. Yeah, it's this, it's that road right here. Okay. So this is the county road here. This is the access we're talking about here. This structure right here next to uh, Mr. Wagner's house. It, there was one there. It was an older lady that lived there. She moved out. It ran down. It's already been referenced. Uh, it burned to the ground before they could get there to to deal with it. And that was right next to Wagner's house that. I mean, it's <coughs> dangerous, his property. If you put uh, structures close in there, you pack more people in there, it's going to be really difficult. And the RV park is in yeah, that blank area it's here on the left. The one you it's yeah. here. it's up top and below. That's all I got. I can't tell there are two of those, but okay, yeah. Could I address some of those possibly? I don't know the relevancy. I was going to do that at the special exception part. I don't know the relevancy. Well, well really, we, we really need to let us get on one step for the, for the, for the 120. You need to make a motion to, you know, conclusion to, with the, yeah, go on to the to, with approval of the, yeah. uh, for your motion. Yeah. So, uh, is there any discussion from the board? Any questions? Do I hear a motion as to whether to proceed with the questions? 
or to deny or to table. Those are the three choices that we have. We're just talking about the 120 to 365. Yes, the 120 to 365, and we do have the right to put restrictions on that and conditions. So we could put a condition on there. It's if, if approved, that it would be contingent upon approval of the special, special exception. exception. And if the special exception is denied, then this would then also be denied. Remember, the 120 days is per person. That person can move out and that person can move in. Doesn't mean you 120 days the maximum press space can be rented for the year, it just means for the person. I believe, right? That's a very valid point. You stay, that that's, yeah, you stay 120 days per person. That guy can come in 120 days. He can stay 120 days. That guy can and you put another days. person in. So technically, you could have someone there yet around. And that's what I'm trying to press on the yeah. board that we're limiting that because we're only open during the season. And our contracts are reservations, say, from October to October. So if someone moved in in April and they left in July because of whatever reason, yes, I could put someone back in there, but their trailer, their season still closes in October. They're not coming in and out. Well, yeah, most of the rest of them, most that's common, 120 days no matter where you go. But that doesn't make that person open now. So yeah. it's not the fact you're eliminating people by making the 120 days maximum, you're just eliminating that person. The other thing that it does too is we have a better uh, enforcement ability because we know who's at the park, you know, consistently. Um, now, so, I don't know necessarily the enforcement. If you if you rent for less than 120 days, you kick them out instantly. And if you go, you won't actually have to go through the court of law to kick them out, aren't you? No. See, that's the difference. What I was trying to explain. That's the difference between a reservation and a lease. So a mobile home, you have to quote unquote you have a, a peaceful place, I guess. Right. And, and and so yes, then I have to go through the eviction process and tell you it's monthly. And especially they, they tear their stuff out of the trailer, they leave it there, they abandon it, they don't show up, you gotta go back, back and forth. It takes quite a bit of money and time. On a reservation, then it's a different type of law. So it's like it's like a hotel. If you don't leave on a hotel, you can instantly. Right. And that's what I was impressing upon the neighbors that I've talked to that I have more control of people if I need to. Um, so you can have allow them to stay there 180 days out of the year and it's considered a reservation? You can kick it out I can have a reservation for the whole year. If we went, the reservation could be because it's a year reservation or a month reservation or a day reservation, it's still a reservation because of the unit that's on there. I don't have a loosehold tenancy for uh, I can't, what I call an RV. On a mobile home, in Carroll County, I've been to that, okay, um, is you have to give them eviction notice, and then you gotta wait another 30 days, 45 days, and it, it's, it's okay. But all the other questions, I think, uh, can get addressed with a special exception. Sure, question. So, the units you're talking about, uh, the people own their own units, and they just reserve the right to park it in that spot. And that's correct, and that's the same with the mobile homes. So the mobile homes own their mobile home. And so, like one of the questions the neighbor were concerned about golf carts driving down on their road. I can't go to a judge and say, hey, I got a tenant that was driving on somebody else's private road, I'm going to evict him. The judge is gonna throw me out of it and say it's not a, nothing to do with me. Um, but if it's an RV and I have a rule in there that says, you know, you." I can have a general rule in there that if you're misconduct or whatever. Do you have that? Do you have any general leases, rules, or anything? I, I don't. The, you know, I can't believe I walked out without it. But I, I have an 18-page contract with rules of the yin yang. Most people leave me because of my rules. Okay, someone's leaving my campgrounds, um, and I've only been here since 2017. I bought lost acres. I mean, took it out of bankruptcy, fixed it up. We're doing the same thing with Norway. Um, I would not have bought this park if it was a mobile home park. I mean, Greg Bogle says, hey, there's something I want you to look at. I wasn't looking for it, but I like to take things and fix them up because I can't fix up old cars. That's what I do. And uh, uh, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I, and I can address some of the, all the concerns that were up there. I can address that.
came up. You, you, can, you can essentially revoke the reservation and evict them out you know, in a very short period of time. Yes, I, yeah, absolutely. Just like kicking somebody out of the hotel. Yeah. Okay, so they have yeah. an, an, a recreational vehicle, and they're going to park it in your lot that they reserve for the lot from you, and they're going to leave it parked there year round. That's what you're asking. What is your security for those? Uh, I heard somebody say something about a cable was put up at some point. Okay, that's if we want to discuss that at this time.